G'day Church, it's uh, Darren Smith here on behalf of the Elders. Um, you'll need to bear with me, I've got a few notes just to keep me on track. Um, I trust that you're um, staying well um, and that you're not feeling too isolated um, and remaining part of our community in a different way, in an electronic way, um, and hopefully through some phone calls and so on. Um, but um, you know, I need to share with you some information about how uh, COVID-19 is affecting us um, as a church in regards to our finances and um, implications for that um, into the short and medium term future. Uh, so bear with me. Um, I guess a few reflections for myself uh, as a natural introvert. I'm, even I'm finding it um, uh, unusual not meeting together as a family and missing that sense of um, you know getting together and spurring one another on and having times of worship together and supporting each other. And so uh, I imagine for those of you um, uh, who are more outgoing, you even find that even more difficult. Um, so just know that we're all um, praying and thinking for about you um, in your various situations. Um, I um, need to give you an update, um, as I said earlier, about what uh, the change in the environment is going to mean for us as a church and how that will, how we can. Uh, we need something from you really to help direct us and guide us as we make decisions over the coming um, six months. Um, before all of that, I just want to acknowledge that this is obviously a really difficult time for a lot of people in our family. Um, and I don't want the information that I'm presenting to cause you um, more anxiety than maybe you're already experiencing. And I certainly don't want you to feel a weight of burden or expectation that um, shouldn't be upon your shoulders with the information that I'm sharing with you. Um, and also before that, I also want to just share some encouragement with you, I suppose. Um, I love the Psalms and I love the fact that they're really uh, raw and they're um, really honest and they're often people who are crying out in the midst of suffering and difficulty. Um, and that uh, they're kind of like the blues of the Bible, you know, um, and, but the people who are writing them don't stay in that place of despair. Um, and difficulty in the midst of their difficulty they cry out to God and so I just wanted to share with you um, one of a, a abbreviated version of one of those psalms, Psalm 46 um, and it's really just a declaration that in the midst of seeming chaos that God's still in control. Um, it reads that God is our refuge and strength. Um, he's always ready to help in times of trouble um, so we do not need to fear when earthquakes come um, and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. The nations may be in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. Um, God's voice thunders and the earth melts. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honoured by every nation. I will be honoured throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's army is here amongst us. The God of Israel is our fortress. So um, I just really pray for you in the midst of all of this uh, reports and projections and data analysis that you're watching on television and all that sort of stuff that um, you can take the time to be still um, and know his presence and his promises and his peace um, in the midst of everything that's going on. Um, but getting on to the business side of the discussion, um, the first point is that if you haven't heard that our op shop um, has needed to close indefinitely, um, just because it's untenable to run the business the way it is um, with the limitations from COVID-19. So um, the implications of that are that all of the paid staff um, will be paid out their entitlements um, and offered to uh, keep their positions but um, at a, under the uh, title of lead without pay. So they remain on our books, but they won't um, derive an income after their um, entitlements are paid out. Um, that uh, means there will be a big loss of community for the people that are um, involved in the op shop. So volunteers, um, friends of the op shop, people who frequent um, coming up and just having a chat or a coffee. Um, and so that is a significant loss um, and hopefully something we'll be able to get up and running as soon as possible again. Um, but the implication for our church financially is that um, it means a loss of income of around about $8,000 a month, um, which is significant, um, as you'd imagine. Um, so our only income now is um, people's giving or their tithes. Um, there are a few small areas of saving that can be made, like in areas uh, of insurance and cleaning and so on, um, but they are quite small. Um, in, in comparison to the losses of income that we have. Um, 
Um, so uh, the other issue that we're, we're struggling with is that everything is in a state of flux. It's very difficult for us to get a handle on where we really stand in terms of um, our income and, and that posi people's positions are changing every day. Um, I'm aware there's people in our church family who have gone from two incomes to no income essentially overnight and things like that. And so that will continue to be the case as, um, the, as the landscape changes. So it's difficult for us to project into the future and make decisions. Um, uh, so last night the elders uh, got together um, and as an interim measure, um, we've reluctantly accepted that the pastors, that being Mark, Lena, Stewie, Kurt and Olive, um, have all offered to go to half of their normal wages um, until we can get a better gauge on where we go from there. Um, we really have no other responsible or practical option um, other than to accept that um, very gener generous offer. Um, what I'm asking of you, um, there are a number of people who are in a blessed position to have ongoing secure incomes. We're not asking you to give more necessarily, um, but what we do need is if um, you are in a position to be able to give, is to start to give in a way that is predictable for us. So we'd really um, like it if you could um, set up direct um, transfer payments of your offerings and ties to the church so that we can start to make a plan um, uh, around decision making for paid staff into the future so that we can create a budget essentially. Now I know for some of you that's not going to be possible and I do not want you to feel a sense of expectation or burden upon you if that's the case. Um, so hear me clearly about that. We're not asking you to give more money to go without food. It's nothing like that. It's simply um, for those of you in a position that can who have secured incomes, if you could have a discussion about what you can give and then commit to making that regular weekly um, transfer so that we can then start over the next few weeks to look at what our income is going to be like and start making some decisions which may be even harder possibly. So please be praying for us as we, uh, for God's wisdom as we um, have to make some of those decisions. Um, so if you are unsure about how to do direct transfers, um, the banking details are on all of the e-news correspondence. Um, but if you just um, find that stuff a little bit challenging, um, uh, Sheree Hawkins, who um, is very generous in her time and expertise that she gives to us at the church, she's um, um, available to help you with that. Um, so she's available from 10 to 3 on Tuesdays. Um, with just the limitations of access to the to the office, it would be better if you can contact her directly prior to um, coming up. So um, give her a text or email or just to arrange a time and she can meet you downstairs um, and just try and, um, if you needs to be face to face or she may better just talk you through it over the phone. Um, for some of you who just um, will only wanna still pay either cash or um, with card, there still will be an option um, with Cherie to be able to do that as well um, if you want to liaise with her. But as I say, if it's all possible, um, it would be our preference that you arrange a direct um, online transfer. Um, if you have any questions about this, which I'm sure that some of you will, um, or concerns, then um, you're certainly welcome to contact myself or any of the other elders, but maybe myself as the first port of call. Um, so I trust that you guys are all gonna stay safe and um, remain part of our electronic community in the short term. Um, get on the phone, ring someone that you haven't spoken to for a few weeks um, uh, and keep following all of our healthcare authorities' advice on how to um, remain well. Right, bless you guys.